Magandang uh, umaga sa lahat. Morning. It is a pleasure to once again uh, discuss the scripture, especially when we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And because this is Christmas season, season as in uh, September, October, November, December, including January, we will be discussing and focusing on the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, we will focus on the question of what is Christ doing right now? Ano ba ginagawa ng Panginoong Yesus ngayon? Alam natin na 2,000 years ago, siya ay pinanganak, siya ay nabuhay, siya ay pinako sa krus, siya ay nilibing, siya ay namatay. But after that, anong nangyari? At ang gamay yun ba, siya ay may trabaho pa rin. May ginagawa pa rin ba ang Panginoong Yesus para sa ating kalintasan? This is something that has been discussed in this part of the Bible, the book of the Hebrews. One of the greatest challenge in the church today, as it has been the challenge, challenge back in the first century. So, unang mabubuksan mo na naging issue, naging controversy sa Bible mismo in the New Testament ay yung person ng Panginoong Yesus. Ibig sabihin, sa loob ng simbahan, sila ay nagkaroon ng unity in the faith. Pero habang ang panahon ay lumilipas, nagkakaroon ng iba't ibang isipan o isipin o pag-iisip tungkol sa mga bagay-bagay na kanilang pananampalataya. Kung ano ba talaga ang binigay, ano ba yung totoo? Ano ba yung pananampalataya, deep faith, na naggaling sa ating Panginoon? So ito yung ating titingnan ngayon. And ang madalas sinasabi ng mga theologian, ng mga pastor, na hanggang ngayon, the same issue na noon ay nangyari even in the New Testament, na narelecord sa scripture, sa Bible, ay the same issue that we are having today. And that is the person and nature of the world of Jesus Christ. Yun pa rin. And uh, sa unang pagtingin natin sa time kung saan ang mga apostles ay nagturo, namatay, at ang natitira na lang ay si John. Magkikita natin sa kanyang sulat, sa 1 John, na ang naging main issue sa kanyang sulat ay mga tao na hindi naniniwala sa kay Jesus na siya ay pinanganak na naging tao. Dahil hindi nga daw pwede na yung Diyos ay magiging tao at Diyos at the same time. That's why they will argue that God did not come in the flesh. That's why the emphasis of John is God manifested in the flesh. He was flesh and blood. And in similar manner, of course, sa ating panahon, ang ating mga madalas na question, eh, uh, si Jesus ba ay Diyos? Tao lamang siya. Pero ang uh, naging issue ng first century ay hindi yung pagkadyos ng uh, Panginoon. Sila lahat ay naniniwala na si Jesus ay Diyos. Dahil sa kanyang pinagagawa at sa testimony, witness ng mga uh, disipulo at nakakita sa kanya. Pero sila ay namamangha. Paano ang Diyos magiging tao? Bakit kailangan ang Diyos ay magiging tao? Ito yung issue na ating titignan ngayon. At ito yung i-discuss ng nagsulat ng book of Hebrews. Now, titignan natin yung i-walk through natin yung Hebrews chapter 1 and chapter 2. Ito, madalas ginagawa namin ni Pastor. We study the Bible hindi isang verse. We don't believe that. That's the the job of the the cults. And I tell you a lot of the Baptist today parang kulto na rin yung pag, pamamaraan ng kanilang pagtuturo. Tatayo dito, mag-isip, ano kayo ituturo ko ngayon? Ah, ito yung naisip ko, ito yung magagandang mga tupi ko ngayon. Hanap tayo ng, ano, ng mga verses na magpuprove ng aking iniisip. Ah, ito, nakita ko sa Genesis, sa Exodus, sa Bible. So, mag mag-isip ka muna kung ano yung paniniwala mo, sa kala mo, ay tama at hahanap ka ng tinatawag nating proof text 
Hindi ganun ang pag-aaral at hindi ganun yung pagbabasa ng salita ng Panginoon. At kung yan ang iyong gawain, tigilan nyo na yan. Okay? Ang pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon, eh, pag nagbasa ka ng Hebrews, basahin mo hanggang sa kaduluhan. Hebrews chapter 1, tapusin mo ang Hebrews chapter 13. Would you believe na yan ang gawain ko sa bahay? Nakikinig ako sa Genesis 1, tinatapos ko hanggang Genesis chapter 15. Pakikinig lang, may ginagawa ka dyan, kung ano man ginagawa mo, o nagpapay nga ka, just play it, para naiintindihan mo ang yung kwento ng Bible. And this is what we'll find here. The other thing is the book of Psalm. Pinag-aralan natin ngayon. The book of Psalm. At magtataka kayo, kung minsan nagsasawa kayo, ano ba yung pastor? Di ba yun din naman ang sinabi doon sa Psalm chapter 1? Chapter 5, chapter 10, chapter 15, bakit pa ulit-ulit? Bakit pa ulit-ulit? Makulit yung Bible? Wala na ba siyang ituturo kung di pa ulit-ulit? And then you will understand as you study the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation na meron pala talagang pa ulit-ulit. Meron siyang tema na sinusunod at meron siyang agenda Alam niya, pag sinabi natin agenda, eh, kahit anong pag-uusapan, babalik tayo sa kanyang agenda. Okay? Pag nakakulay siya ng pink, alam mo niya, may agenda yan. O di kaya rin naka-green, o di kaya na pag naka-blue. May mga agenda yung mga yan. Ha? Titingan mo ko ng mga kulay ngayon ng damit. <laughs> Di ba? Kasi nasa Facebook na yan eh. Oo, oh, suot niyo ganito. Kaya... Kita ako, eh, nakamas ng pink, ibig sabihin. Ganyan tayo nga. <laughs> Ay, ganun pala. Ganun pala yun. Okay. So, anyway, the, the book of Psalm is what we call, doon na de-demonstrate yung tinatawag natin Jewish meditation literature. Jewish meditation literature. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang pala pwedeng basahin mo. Ang pamamaraan ng mga Hudyo ay hindi lamang magbabasa ng minsan, tapos na. Ah, tatanungin mo, nabasa mo na yung Bible? Oo, oh, once, of course. Hindi mo ba natanong na nabasa mo na yung Bible the whole year? Eh kung ilang uh, the whole year, nabasa mo minsan o oh, makalawa? Have you done that? Have you ever read the Bible in its entirety? Yun yung mga tanong. And then, you come to the book of Hebrews, and then here is the writer of the Hebrews, he will be quoting the book of Psalm. Imagine mo, pinag-aralan din natin Psalm, and then here he comes, sasabihin niya, kayo mga Hudyo, sa pamang araw-araw niyo na pamumuhay, ang kinakanta niyo Psalm, nire-recite niyo Psalm, pinipray niyo Psalm, minabasa niyo Psalm, ito ang proof na nasa Psalm, yung Misaya. Nasa Psalm yung buhay, yung nature at saka person ni Jesus Christ. Ganun lang kadali. That is the secret. Yung pala yung sikreto. Kaya, kaya pala napakadaling magintindi ng mga hudyo na nagbabasa ng, kalit, ng salita ng Panginoon. Na ito nga pala si Jesus. Ito pala yung ating kinakanta. Ito pala yung ating pinagpipri. Ito pala yung ating nilalisay. Book of the Psalm. Pero Book of the Psalm is probably one of the most neglected. Kaya pasalamat kayo na tayo ay nag gumagawa ng meditation dyan. Every Wednesday. Bakit? Dahil sa paulit-ulit, ito yung sistema ng mga Hudyo. Kasi wala naman silang Bible noon. So they have to memorize. They have to memorize the character of their God, the nature of their God, the relationship with their God. Kailangan paulit-ulit yun in so many different situations. Kaya makikita natin dito na yung book of Hebrew, they will quoting the book of Psalm. And so, the story will go in the presentation of Psalm 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Psalm chapter 1 and 2 will present who Jesus is, his uh, person, his nature, what Jesus did, his work when he was here on earth, and what Jesus is doing now, hanggang ngayon, nagtatrabaho ang Panginoon para sa aking kaligtasan. So before that, shall we pray? Our Lord and Jesus, Father, we pray and thank you na Ikaw ay ang aming Panginoon na 
nandyan sa aming binabasa sa pang-araw-araw, especially sa the book of Psalm, and of course, the whole of Bible, the Old Testament. At sana Lord, appreciate namin yung katotohanan na itong mga bagay-bagay na ito ay hindi lamin namin na invento. Yung panampalataya namin kung dito ay talagang galing sa iyo, then ito ay tinurong sa iyong salita. For the of these things in His name, Okay, so who is Jesus? So unang imbukada sa ating pagbabasa, ang sabi dito, long ago, ibig sabihin, it talks about the Old Testament or even beyond the Old Testament. Prophets has been sent by God. Moses, even at the time of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and doon yung mga, uh, sent by God. Probably they come in the form of angels, in so many ways. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophet. But in these last days, pag sinabing natin last days, hindi 2021. Yung iba, hindi na napavaksin, kasi 2021, na, kaya ano na, rapture na. Baka 2022. Para sa ano pa yung vaksin? Para ano pa yung magtatrabaho tayo, naghihirap tayo? Bakit mag-mission pa tayo, nag-insip tayo na ano? Pretend na lang natin, sarili natin. Hindi ganun yung pagnanalita ng salita ng Panginoon. The last days ang simula nung pagdating ni Christo Jesus. Sa kanyang ministry mismo, sinasabi niya, this is already last days hanggang ngayon. So, ang Bible, o ang istorya ng, Bible, ng istorya natin, history, is divided into two parts. The Old and the New Testament. The Old we call long time ago, the New we call the last days. God has spoken to us by His Son, whom God appointed the heir. So, nagsalita yung Panginoon. He revealed Himself in the Old Testament, but now He revealed Himself in the New Testament through His Son. Tanong natin, who is this Son? This Son He appointed as heir. Yung heir. So, Siya yung Papalit sa kanya. O aangkin nung kanya. That, that, that's what the idea of air. Okay? So, ito yung makikita natin. Ito word na ginagamit sa scripture is like a first word. They are related to that concept. That, that same father will have his son in the same nature, in the same form, and they will have the same assignment. Kung ano yung property ng father, property din siya ng son. To whom Jesus also God created the world. Through Jesus, God created the world. Kung wala si Jesus, wala tayo. Walang mundo. Bakit? It was through Jesus that this world has been created. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God. Bakit pinanganap yung Panginoon? Kung hindi na pinanganap ang Panginoon, hindi natin makikilala kung ano ang Diyos. Kung sino ang Diyos. Nakikilala lang natin ang Diyos dahil kay Jesus Christ. We might have the, the sum of the attributes of God. But with Jesus Christ, the fullness of the attribute of God is seen on Him. Makikita natin. Dahil ma masabi natin, oh, our God is so so big, so mighty, and He created the world sa so Old Testament. Pero pagdating mo sa, sa New Testament, oh, God is a personal God. He wants to communicate with God, with us. God is a loving God. And God is a merciful and faithful God because of the person of Jesus Christ and the exact imprint of God's nature. So whatever you see, we, you think of God, you can see it in Jesus Christ Himself. And Jesus upholds the universe. So when God created the universe, but at the same time, God created the universe through Jesus. And Jesus is the one that upholds, upholds, holds, maintains every breath that we take, every stars and every laws of nature that is going on is right now on the hands of Jesus. 
So kahit anong ginagawa ngayon, lahat ng mga bagay dito sa ating mundo, these are happening because of the power of Jesus. Tataka kayo ha, anak peso Bible niyo, oh wala naman Jesus dito kasi pinalitan ko yung he, his, him, yung mga pronouns para klarong klaro ko anong ibig sabihin dito na Hebrews. After making for purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Every time you see the word sit, sat, okay, it is a position of power, a position of authority. Everybody else is kneeling. Everybody else is praising them. As we, as we, uh, as we, as we sing our hymns, everybody is adoring him. He is sitting. He has the authority. He has the power. The power of the majesty is with him. Having become as much superior to angels as the name Jesus has inherited is more excellent than theirs. When you say Anatan, my sons will own the word Anatan and they will have my characteristic, my genetics. In similar manner, it is in the form of, uh, in the manner, Jesus is, owns the name of Yahweh. Yahweh, God, Jesus has that same character, that same nature. He has inherited it. And now, we talk about why did Hebrews suddenly talk about angels? Because angels in the Old Testament, and even at the time of the writer of the Hebrews, okay, so okay, let's assume we're talking about the writer of the Hebrews. But a lot of my readings is that they would say that it is the Apostle Paul actually, because the structure, the structure, especially this, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and 2, is really structured in the way the Apostle Paul presents it. It might not be, not be him that was writing, but definitely the content of the writing of the Hebrews is that of the Apostle Paul. Anyway, so there will be a lot of phrases here that will be reminiscent. You can see it in the writings of the Apostle Paul. So he inherited is more excellent than there. So you have the angels, you have man, and you have God. God, angels, man. So far, the experience of man, the greatest, because they cannot see God, but they, they can experience angels. And according to the Old Testament, they have the angels of Yahweh that shows power, shows a kind of grandeur of their nature. Just imagine, for example, at the time I think of Ezekiah, there was 187,000 armies in front of a single angel. And he killed all those armies of the Assyrians in one blow, one angel. Just imagine the power of an angel. And so here we, we look at their idea of angel. He is uh, based on experience, the highest. And yet Jesus Christ is higher than the angel because his name, his inheritance is higher than them. And between them, there is no other, uh, another entity between angel and God. There is only angel or God. And if he's not an angel, then he must be God. And here we find seven types. Okay, okay I will just uh, name, okay, to simplify my language, Paul. Paul quotes seven uh uh, Old Testament text and all of them are in the book of Psalm. Okay? So when we read the book of Psalm, we, we think about the Messiah. A lot of the, the, the writings, uh, the, the Psalm, are actually Messianic Psalms. Sometimes we might neglect, Pastor and I might neglect to explain to you that while these are the experience of David, these are actually prophesying the work and person of the Messiah. Let's look, uh, we, let's run down. This is a work through in the book of Hebrews. For to which of the angels, okay? So here is the angel, he is the son, and here is God. 
For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Okay? And then, or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Would you wonder that the Bible, especially the New Testament, and even the Old Testament, speaks of the father and the son? There is no the father, the son, the daughter, the mother. You don't have that in the Bible. You don't have that kind of family God. There is only the father, the son, and the spirit. But here he focuses, the Paul focuses on the father and the son. So you have here again a relationship between the father and the son written in Psalm 89. The other one is written in Psalm chapter 2. The, the, the messianic king in Psalm chapter 2. Again, when he brings the firstborn, again, the firstborn, the heir, okay, the, the begotten, okay, these are uh, words of relationship and nature of the father and the son. He brings the firstborn into the world. He says, let all God's angels worship him. Let everybody worship Jesus. You will never find that. That is blasphemy in the Old Testament. That's why they were kicked out of the promised land. Because they tried to, to think and worship other gods. But there is only one God. That was established in the New Testament. But then again, here comes the Paul telling them. Okay, here is Jesus. Worship him. Of the angels he say okay so what should the angels are doing he says he makes his angels winds spirits in in uh, Hebrew okay if you are listening to me the Hebrew for spirit is ruach ruach they say no so there is a breath the sound of the breath that's the spirit wind so wind, spirit, breath, they are uh, of the same uh, origin. And his ministers of flame of fire. So he has his uh, servants. They are winds, they are fires, they use, he use them. But how about the sun? But of the sun he says, your throne, O Jesus, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, Jesus, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. We can see here the, the, the understanding of the writer of the Hebrew. The problem of the Hebrew I, I forgot to mention it. Why did the writer of the Hebrew, I would say Apostle Paul, wrote this? Because the Hebrews are suffering a lot of tribulation. And then they wonder what's happening. We thought that we have Jesus is... Uh, he is supposed to have this all this power, and then where is he? What is he doing right now? And they are thinking of going back to uh, Judaism. They have their high priest, they have their temple, and the and the Jewish leaders would say to them, "Forget about Jesus. Forget about Christianity. Forget about being a Christian. Go back to." Judaism, go back to the temple, go back to the sacrifices and the high priest. And so therefore, the writer says, okay, you have to understand who this Jesus is we are talking about. And what he is doing. The person and work of Jesus. How he is being addressed in the Old Testament. That's why the writer of the Hebrews is very clear, very succinct, 
There is no way you will ever understand that Jesus is talking about is lower than the level and nature of God himself. And so you will see the argument, the Apostle Paul, subpun, subpun, dugtong, dugtong, that's the way he argues. You read the book of Romans. From Romans 1 to chapter uh, 11, you have 87 questions. He will connect everything up to a ch uh, chapter 11 in this a similar manner. The writer of the Hebrews also connects everything. If this is what he does with the angel. This is his relationship with his son. This is what he says about the son. And you, Lord Jesus, lay the foundation of the earth and beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like a robe, you will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed. But you are the same. Today, yesterday, and forever. That is exactly what he is saying in the next chapters. That this Jesus is the not change, immutable. Today, yesterday, today, and forever. And your years will have no end. Psalm 102. So just imagine. We're reading Psalm 102. The Jews will be praying, singing, and everything, reciting Psalm 102. And then they realize that when they saw the person in the work of Jesus Christ and the way he claimed himself to be, they, he realized, they realized that, what, that all along the psalms that they were singing were actually referring to Jesus Christ. This is how the writer of the Hebrews is explaining again. And to which of the angels, again, son, angel, angel, son, okay, I forgot where is the living, the right, okay, angel, stay there, son, stay there, God, and to which of the angels has he ever said, sit, sit, not bow, not kneel, sit, beside me. Until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. As we look at the scripture in the Old Testament, the first commandment, first commandment alone will tell you that you cannot do this. You cannot do this unless you're doing this for God. Love the Lord your God. I am Yahweh. I am one. And yet here it comes. See that everybody else worship you. Are they not ministering spirits? Who are these angels? They're nothing. They are just ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. Now we come in. We talk about Jesus. Now he talks about his work for us. That the angels and even the Lord Jesus Christ actually works for our salvation. Why? What is so special about us? Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels, so we must not be among here. So time of Abraham, Isaac, Moses, everybody else. Even before Abraham, their declaration, angels, proved to be reliable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just retribution. Na pag may nensayang ang hell, kailangan mag-ingat ka. Sundin mo, dahil pag hindi mo sinunodan, there will be retribution. How much more now that we have the message of salvation? And this is brought to us by the Lord Himself. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord Jesus. So you 
message is higher than the angel. Ito ang angel niya is so reliable. How much more the message of Jesus? How much more reliable and how much more we pay attention to the message? And this message is not only for from him, but this is also attested by those who heard eyewitnesses, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders. So we have the witnesses who saw the person, the nature, the work of Jesus Christ, but at the same time, God continues to show that power. Witness through signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. For it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. So we are now talking about us. Us. And when we say us, it's not meaning each and every person in the world. Okay? Pag-usapan natin ito, ako nagbabasa kayo ng Bible, pag sinabi po, huwag mo kagad asipin na each and every person in the world. Parang ito yung pag-iisipin na ang pagsusulat ng mga ito ay sinusulat sa mga believers, sa mga nanampalataya at sa mga taong mananampalataya pa sa salita at witness ng mga mananampalataya. Those who will believe the witness of the believers. This is so common. Ito yung general context. Especially when you read the New Testament. Probably the Gospels would say that, okay, it was a witness to all people, but specifically those are first written to confirm to those who believe. So, pinadala yan, sinulat yan, ito yung mga pinampalatayaan nyo, ito yung totoong nangyari dyan. Kaya matuloy kayo manampalataya. Pag doon sa mga hindi nampalataya, manampalataya kayo dahil dito sa sinusulat namin ngayon. Therefore, it was never meant for those who do not believe. Anong kwenta ng Gospels? Sa milyon mo mabasahin niya kung hindi ka maniniwala, ang palataya. Nothing. It will not affect you. But anyway, we are here focusing on us now. Sa ating ngayon, ang focus yung salita na ni Hebrews. It has been intensified somewhere. What is man? Okay. And ito na tayo. Tao. Tao daw. That you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him. You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with the glory and honor putting everything in subjection under his feet. Okay. Tao. Pero he's now talking about another man. Tayo, tao. Pero may tao. May isang tao that is crowned with glory, with honor, and subject everything under His feet. Tao yun. Hindi yung Diyos. Tao. Sa so chapter 1, mayroong Diyos. Yung Diyos na yun, subjected lahat sa kanya, sinasamba siya. Pero again, here comes, may tao na sinasamba din. Eh, hindi ako yun. Hindi sikibulo yun. Tingnan natin yung sinong tao na yun. Now, in putting everything in subjecting, subjecting, subjection to Him, Jesus. Si Jesus pala yung tao. Doon sa kapila, sabi Diyos, pero dito tao. Tao. Dito natin nga nagdidiscover, bakit kailangan siyang maging tao tulad natin? At hindi siya naging anghel tulad ng mga anghel. Bakit naging tao? At present, we do not see, yet see everything in subjection to Him. Wala pa. Hindi pa lang din nakikita. Ang dami pong mga ano, evil dito sa mundo. Kahit tayo na tagasunod ni Jesus ay hindi sumusunod sa Kanya all the time. Most of the time. Pero ang sinasabi dito is that He or God already subjected to this man the power Subjection of everything on earth. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels. He was given a position. 
He was sent here. The word always in the scripture is he was sent to the world. In the manner of a father and son, he was forgiven. He gave his son. He was sent. I mean, it's a bit of, he was already there. He was already with the father. The father just sent him. The father just gave him. So ito yung karakter ng pagsasabi. That's why when we see that he is now man, he was made in that position. And he is now lower than the angels. Okay? So we have the God, we have angel, we have man. Jesus is man. He is lower than angels. Namely, Jesus, although he is crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, bakit kailangan siya maging tao? Kailangan niya mamatay. Ang ngayon hindi mamamatay para sa tao. Ang Diyos hindi mamamatay. I-Diyos yun eh. Kailangan siya maging tao para siya ay mamatay. At mamatay para sa lahat ng tao. Kung sinabi natin lahat, everyone, ito yung saya yan. Lahat na naman tayo. Pag binasa natin si Hebrews, palagi yung context niya, brothers, believers. Basahin natin, titingnan natin continuously kung saan nakatukoy yung kamatayan ni Kristo. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist. Hindi ba sinabi nga natin na siya ang migawas, kanya pinaraan ang taang creation? in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering? Paano yun? He is God. He created everything. Yet he is man. He is suffering. For he who sanctifies in those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call him brothers. Say. I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children of God has given me. Ano sinasabi rito? Panginoon pinanganap nandito ngayon. Incarnation para sa Panginoon para sa kanya mga kapatid. Sino yung mga kapatid niya? Tao! Hindi Diyos. Tao! Sino liligtas niya? Tao! Sino liligtas niya? Brothers! Mga kapatiran niya. Alam mo nung pinapakapako si Jesus sa Psalm 22, pag binasa mo yon, anong sabi nun sa Psalm 22? Ito yung verse na to. I will tell you of your name, to my brothers in the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. Alam ko ano yung ano niya? My God! My God! Why hast thou forsaken me? Tao yun! Tao! That's why sinabi niya, yung sinabi niya, I will tell you my name to my brothers. Tao mga kasamahan kong mga tao. Para sa kanila itong kamatayan ko. And again, kanino ang pinagpalataya? Tao, papunta sa Diyos. And again, yung sabi niya, I and the children, God, and my human brothers that you have given me to me. Ito, sila. Kaya ako, pinanak na tao para sa atin. Imagine. Tawag dito sa, ba, sa theology, the humiliation of Christ. He was, he allowed himself to be humiliated mula sa Diyos. Anghel, naging tao siya. Mas mababa pa siya kaysa anghel. Pero para saan yun? Dahil ang kaligtasan ay pamamalaan lamang sa pagiging tao niya. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself was part two of the same thing. 
Bakit kailangan siya maging tao? Because he have to share the flesh and the blood. This is Hebraism. This is the Hebrew language of the human nature. Jesus has to have a human nature. He has to take that if ever he wants to save man. And the way that he will save man is through payment, vicarious payment of the death of sin. The wages of sin is death. But that wages is paid on the cross. That through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Pag-isipan mo ito. Palagi nag-iisip tayo na matay ito, na matay yan, na matay. Lahat tayo takot sa kamatayan. In fact, hindi natin pinag-uusapan yun. Madalas, uh, a lot of my, actually, I'm speaking of my mother. She has no plans of dying. Madami sa ating ganun. Kaya sinabi ko na sa mga anak ko, anak, pag nagbibilang kayo ng birthday niyo, huwag kayo magbibilang ng 21 and forever. Dapat 21 over 70. Ibig sabihin, ng 70 years old ka lang. Tulad ko, 60, 59 over 70. Ibig sabihin, labing isang taon na lang ako dito sa mundo na to. That is the most practical way of living. Di ba? Nung nababasa natin sa parables, naghahanda sila, dami-dami pera, lubenta anyos na! Sige, pero pa rin, bilyon-bilyon pa rin, lubenta anyos, lubenta yung uno, lubenta yung dos. Gusto pa every inch. Nga, anong sabi ng Queen of England? I will, I will sold to all, I will give away all my gold and silver just for a minute. Of another life? Ganun ba yun? You pay a million? The Lord, tugtuman mo ko na isang araw. Na isang minuto. Million-million na nagastusin ko kahit mabulogay ka na eh. Why? Because we are afraid of death. Takot tayo sa kamatayan. And yet the New Testament says, we, we embrace death. Why? Because we are going to see the face of Jesus. Oh Lord. Gives us a different worldview in the way we read the book of Hebrews. Children share in flesh and blood. Kailangan ni Jesus maging tao, mag-share sa atin. So yung madalas pag-usapan natin Anong karakter ni Jesus? Tao siya! Tao! Ano ibig sabihin nun? Hindi niya alam lahat dahil tao siya. Pag hindi ibang alam niya lahat, Diyos siya. Pag sinabi niya, hindi ko alam kung kailan ang pabalik. Tao siya! That, that is the concept of being man. He is man. We cannot deny that. He says he is man. He has to die as man. Sino yung namatay? Ang Diyos? Jesus, God, will never die. But Jesus, the man, has to die. Kailangan niya mamatay. Dahil kung hindi siya mamatay, wala tayong kalitasan. For surely it is not angel that he helps. Di ba sa mga angel? Natawa ko sa isang web uh, pinapanood ko kagabi nung isang araw. Nag-usapan nila ang kaitasa ng mga angel. <laughs> di ba nila naisip bakit naging tao si Jesus at hindi naging angel? Kailangan maging tao siya para matulungan niya ang tao. 
Dan zei hij dit is een verse 5. Maar die helpt de offspring van op Abraham. Zie je wat Abraham? De vader van de faith. De vader van de faithful. Dat is waar je ook mee helpt. Those who have faith. Kailangan ik hindi natin yun. Kasi madami ngayon ang tuturo, ah, kaligtasan para sa lahat yan. God is love. Eventually, walang hell, tatanggalin yan. Lahat tayo pupunta sa langit. Eh, ano pang pinagagawa natin? Eh, mag-enjoy tayo. Labas naman tayo dito. Bakit tayo nagsiserve sa Panginoon? Lahat ng papay, maliligtas eh. But we have to understand that the focus of God's manhood bakit siya naging tao ay para sa mga taong binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon. Kita na natin yung kanina. I, the children, you have given me. Therefore, he had to be made truly human in every way. Tanda ko yan. Pag blue na kita mo, wala sa Bible yan. Truly made human in every way. Like his brothers in every respect. Paano pa natin? The writer of the Hebrew is so very clear, napaka-klaro. Kaya nga gusto ko, we just go through eh. Masahin lang natin, intindihan lang natin. That is what actually the, 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 the Jews are doing in the Old Testament. Nagbabasa lang sila. Tapos na. Sometimes they don't have to explain. Masahin lang nila because it is very clear passages. Ano problema natin? Hindi tayo nagbabasa. Hindi natin binabasa, kaya ang dami natin iniisip, ang dami, na, ang dami natin uh, inaano na kung ano ng mga hindi natin maintindihan. Hindi natin binabasa eh. Napakakaro naman. Ang naging buhasis ako, Elisa Riano. <laughs> Therefore, he had, be, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered and tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Temptation. Temptation to human nature. Jesus have all that. So very basic na kaya nagita ang Panginoon dahil nararamdaman niya yung nararamdaman natin. Yung mga challenges natin, mga problema natin, nararamdaman niya rin. Ginutom din siya. Alam niya yung nagugutom. Alam niya yung maging mahirap. Mahirap din siya. And so, hindi mo masabi na hindi ako maintindihan ng Diyos. Hindi. Maintindihan ka. Di Jesus. Dahil naging tao siya. That's the only way that we can understand the Bible. When we understand that Jesus is man, truly man, fully man, but at the same time, He is also truly God, fully God, for Him to be able to save us. It takes God to save us. Ganun yung sinasabi rito. Napakasarap isipin na pag nagpipray pala tayo, Lord, tulungan mo ako sa mga challenges, temptations, test sa buhay ko. Napakasarap isipin na si Jesus nakakasimpatay sa atin. Naiintindihan niya yung feeling na Alam mo kung isang may problema ka, di ba? Gusto mo sinishare mo sa mga tao na nakakasimpa tayo sa iyo. And then pag naka, na, masabi mo lang yung problema mo, natatanggal na yung bigat sa loob mo. Yung mga tagong, minat, mga tinatawang problema na sinasarili mo, yun yung nasustroke eh. Yun yung na blood ka. <laughs> so kailangan yung labas. And the best way is to share that to Jesus. Dahil naiintindihan niya tayo. In this Hebrew chapter 7 verse 23, sabi niya, The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office 
but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost, to the max. At the very end, hindi kanya bibitawan, hindi lang sa gitna. Those who draw near to God to Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Ano ginagawa ni Jesus ngayon? Ano ginagawa niya? Hindi yung namatay siya, nilibing, tapos uh, nabuhay muli, tapos na yung trabaho niya. Hindi. He still intercedes for us. He's still there in the heavens as a high priest. Washing our sins. Forgiving us. Have those realities in our lives. Of Him interceding for us. Ano po nag tayo? Sacrifice, offering. Pag nag-offer tayo, sige lang, bariya ang bibigay natin. Probably, pag nagluto lang tayo, kahit ano na lang, nuwapay na yan. Masarap dito dahil hindi pa payag yung mga kapatiran natin ng sakote lang. Talagang pag nagluto, masarap. Kasi, you're doing it, not, not specifically only for, for men para sa mga kasama niyo, kundi this is service to God. This is service to the church. Alam mo yung sinabi ni, ano, ni Bruce chapter 7, verse 26, For this was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Madalas, nagdadala tayo ng sacrificio natin, kahit ano na lang eh. Sitting nyo nga, yung buhay natin, pa-service natin, kung ano na lang yung bariya sa ating buhay yung bibigay natin sa Panginoon. When you think of the Old Testament, Old Testament, so, sila ay magbibigay ng offering. Kung talagang pobre ka, dab yung bibigay mo. Kung medyo may kakayahan ka, magdala ka ng cup dyan, malaking ram, goat, uh, lamb. So, yun yung dadalhin mo. But there is one thing, one thing that is essential bago tatanggapin. Kahit dab lang, ano dapat yun? Unblemished. Perfect. Holy, innocent, and stained, separated. Yun yung service, yun yung sacrifice na tatanggapin lamang ng mga priest doon sa Old Testament. Sa panahon natin ngayon, are we thinking about that? Na pag nagsasacrifice tayo, nagbibigay tayo sa Panginoon, eh kahit ano na lang, hindi tatanggapin ng Panginoon yun. Kahit Pobre tayo, we give dove, but the dove has to be what? Perfect, unblemished. Hindi bulag, hindi pilay, hindi payat. Ganun ang concept natin makikita sa Old Testament. At dala-dala ito ni Jesus. Nung sinakripisyo niya yung sarili niya, bakit siya lamang ang pwedeng magsakripisyo at natanggapin ng Diyos? Itong sabi sa verse 26, Holy, innocent, and stained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Man cannot save man. If man has to be saved, it has to be God. But he cannot save himself. By himself, by his nature, God. He has to become man. That's why our Savior is the God-man, Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Oh Lord and gracious Father, we praise you and thank you, Lord, for this time. We pray, Lord, that as we celebrate, we think about the incarnation, about the uh, Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We pray, Lord, na sana ma makita namin kung ano yung effort, the effort, 
the greatest effort that is done by Trinity when they decided that Jesus assumed the human nature, add to his God nature, the human nature, for salvation for man, for us, not for angels, but for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for sending us your Son. And in his name we pray. Amen.